Hello and welcome to the 23rd video in this series program with Chess Engine GUI in JavaScript. Before I start this video, just an apology. The, uh, there are builders knocking sounds yet again as there have been for about the past three weeks here all around. So during this video you may hear some drilling or knocking sounds but the alternative is for me to just for weeks on end not make any videos so I decided to go with the annoying sounds and make a couple of videos anyway. So I'm sorry if that uh, disturbs you. So on to this video. We start, we've started our generate moves function and a bit of a long-winded explanation in the last video but hopefully you understand how we're going to index and store the moves using our move list start array for the indexing at the given play. And now we can actually move on to looking at generating the moves themselves. So the first thing we're going to need is some variables before we start. So we're going to make a variable called piece type and we're going to make a variable called piece num and we're going to make a variable called square and it should be pretty ob or sq sorry it should be pretty obvious what these are going to do i'm going to break the generation of the moves down probably into two three maybe even four videos to do this step by step so it's fairly clear what's going on but what we need to do is we need to generate moves depending on which side is currently to move so either for the white or the black pieces now for non-pawn pieces there is actually a way of doing this without needing to do an if side equals white otherwise for black do exactly the same code. For pawns however and for castling moves this isn't the case we need to have an if else statement for the side. Well we do in the way this program is being structured anyway for simplicity there are ways of course of doing it without even having an if else statement for pawns. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if and gameboard dot side and we're going to say whoops stop sorry, dot side equals and then colors dot white and I'm going to put the else in now for black here as well and the assumption of course here and like I've said a few times in the video so far is is that the side is either white or black in if you followed the C video I've got a lot of asserts in the C code to check and test that every array index and every kind of equals and things like this every, every, everything is actually within the bounds that we expect I haven't put any of this inside this JavaScript program to keep things a little bit shorter uh, but I recommend if you are doing this yourselves to make sure things are relatively bug free I'm pretty sure things are okay but, but you never know so if the side is white the piece we're going to be dealing with is the We'll set piece type equal to pieces and we're going to be dealing with the moves for the white pawn and something that we're going to now put right at the end of this statement here so I don't forget later on I'm going to set the piece type once we've done all the pawn move generations to a white knight and I'm just going to copy this here and paste this down into the else statement here and make the piece a black pawn and set the piece equal to a black knight and the reason I'm doing this here it's a little bit of a hack but it'll become clear later because it sets the right piece color for generating the moves after this if else statement for the rest of the pieces on the board irrespective of the side but you'll see how that works later so now we've selected our piece type as white pawn we need to do something that you've seen a lot already in previous videos but we're going to simply loop through all the pawns that we have on our board using our piece list so we'll say piece num is less than and then game board and then the game board piece num of our piece type we could also have typed just pieces dot white pawn here but I think it's better to do it this way or for me a little bit clearer anyway and plus plus piece type and now what we need to do is we need to get the square that our piece at piece num is on and this is also something we've seen a couple of times already in code we use our piece list for that so we go game board p list and then we'll use our piece index function combined with our piece type and our piece num and this gets the square then that the white pawn of number piece num is sitting on and now we can look at how we're going to generate the moves and you remember that the pawns move forwards and capture diagonally so that means if a square in front of a pawn is empty then it can move there and if it's on its starting rank so in the case of white it's on rank 2 or in the case of black on rank 7 
and the square, both squares in front of it are empty, then it can do what's called a pawn start move. So what we can say is, we can say that if gameboard dot pieces and at square plus 10, because you remember that white is moving up the board and you remember that we have our board, our 120 array is 10 wide, so one square forwards is 10 upwards. And we don't need to do a test here to ask if we're actually going off the top of the board or we're going off board because a pawn will promote and no longer be a pawn when it hits the 8th rank. So we can say that if that is pieces empty, so if the square in front is empty, then we can do something. And I'm just going to put a placeholder. I'm going to say add quiet move. Sorry, add pawn move. This will be here, not quiet move. The next one will be a quiet move. And now what we can say is, is OK. We know the square in front of the pawn is empty. We can say that if ranks board and then of our square equals ranks dot rank two. Oops, it should be a dot. So if we're on the second rank because it's white, and we can say that game board dot pieces and now we'll do square plus twenty to go two squares in front equals pieces dot empty. So that means we know that we're on the second rank. We already know that the square directly in front of the pawn is empty because we've gone through this if else if statement here. So now if the second square in front is empty then we can make the pawn start move and we'll put or we'll add the move and we'll put now add quiet move here. And the reason I'm distinguishing between quiet and pawn moves is we're going to have a few different move adding functions. A pawn move is, is special because when we add a pawn move of course we have to test whether we're going to the 8th rank. So if we are we're promoting and we need to add 4 moves for a pawn because it promotes to a knight, a bishop, a rook or a queen. This is a non-promoting move, the pawn start, it's not going to get to the 8th rank. So we can just add a normal move and we'll send in the flag for a pawn start in here. But we'll be adding these moves later on when we finish this uh, the code in this generate moves function. So for now that's the placeholders in to generate the non-capturing moves for a pawn. But now what we have to deal with is the capturing moves. So what we can do is we can say if the square off board and we're capturing now diagonally remember. Oops I've put the wrong as usual the wrong uh, brackets in. And now we're capturing the diagonal direction so that's either a plus 9 or a plus 11 direction. So we'll say that if we're not off the board in the plus 9 direction and the colour of the piece that's at square plus 9 so that'll be game board dot pieces and square plus 9 is black so if it's a black piece so it's not empty and it's not white and it's not going off the board in that direction as well then we can generate a capture move for this pawn so we'll put here add pawn cap move and this will be another pawn move function that's different to the pawn move normal pawn move here because a pawn capture move will also add some scores on as well which we'll see much later when we come to searching which is why in the board structure we've actually got not just the moves but we've also got the move scores for because you're using those in the searching algorithm for the engine to actually order the moves as best we can as well so we need to distinguish adding captures as well so we'll add a pawn capture move here and likewise the other direction is in the plus 11 direction so I'll just copy paste that and put plus 11 and we can also add a pawn capture move. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down a little bit to make some space here and now what we can say is if the game board and then we'll say the en passant square is not equal to squares dot no square. That means that the black just made, in this case, a move, uh, a pawn start move, so has activated an ampersand square. So what we need to say now then is if the square we're on now, plus nine, so diagonally, is equal to the game board on ampersand square, 
then we can generate an en passant capture here. So I'm just going to put another placeholder in here for now and I'll go add en passant move. And likewise we can copy this and go for the plus 11 direction as well. And that's all there is to it. And remember this is quite, we don't need to do any testing for a wraparound because we've got these um, squares around our board which is why we've used uh, a 120 array so we don't need to do any testing that we're wrapping around. So this here then will generate the en passant moves for the white pawns as well. And now all that remains is to take this code that we've got here for the white pawns and I'm going to do something rather dangerous rather than type it out. I'm going to select the whole for loop and I'm going to drop in that code at the pieces black pawn here. So we've got the entire for loop, but we have to be a bit careful here in changing things because this is where bugs can happen when you do things really typing out in this way. So now we need to change to square minus 10 because we're going the opposite way. And if we're starting now on the seventh rank and at minus 20, we've got pieces dot empty, then we can add the quiet move. And now what we want to say is if minus nine is off the board and at square minus nine, we have a white piece, then we'll add a pawn capture. And we'll say if at square minus 11, and the drill started if you can hear it, I don't know, and the piece at minus 11 is white, then we can add a pawn capture move. And likewise for the en passant here, we simply do need to do a minus 9 and a minus 11 in this way to add our en passant captures. So that's it for this video then. That's the code added now with placeholders for actually generating the moves. And that's the code then complete now for the white pawns and also complete for the black pawns. The next video will carry on building up the code for the other pieces as well. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.